Hello, and welcome back to another edition of the Medique Trust Plugin. My name is Nathaniel P. Wilkerson, and today I wanted to dive into uh, roof connections a little further. So, uh, right off the bat, I'm going to pull this here complex roof toolbar out and um, show you guys that right here, this icon, the complex roof connection icon, is now um, not just for complex roofs. So, basically, what we've done now is set it up so that you can connect other types of roofs, uh, regular raptor roofs, uh, truss roofs, and of course complex roofs, and along with just basic solids. So yeah, so that tool right here is uh, applicable to all roof types now, so not just complex roofs. But I am going to probably just leave that icon in that toolbar only because um, I don't right now have a, currently a better place to put it. So. All right, so let's uh, jump right into this. Um, I'm going to start just with the gable rafter roof to demonstrate this. So we're going to start here and just draw ourselves a basic gable roof and make it fairly sizable and go with just the basic options. Now, one thing to note too is not all the advanced options are shown in this um, advanced options menu, and the reason is is because You'll notice already how tall it is, and there is no way actually to physically resize these um, kind of old school menus. So <clears throat> I've uh, opted not to add all of the advanced options here, only because with uh, smaller screens, especially laptops, um, you'll find that um, you know this menu will actually run off of the screen, and you can't actually utilize it. So that is one thing to note. So. And of course, when you want to do, you know, when you want to edit these roofs and add some of the other options, um, you can just use the edit menu, jump in here, and you'll notice that all of your advanced options are shown. So typically, like with insulation, um, yeah, go ahead, create your roof first, then go ahead and if you want to turn on the insulation, you can turn that on. Okay, so back to the uh, roof connections. So, so one thing you're going to notice right off the bat is that of course, now we've already created a complex roof in this model, so we've got the hidden um, roof hidden layer right here, and we've also got the roof outline layer. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn these both on. They were turned off, and by default, when you do draw a gable raptor roof or any truss roof, you'll notice that these two um, layers or tags are automatically created for you now, whereas before they were only created with the complex roof. So if you turn those on, um, and by default, by the way, they will be hidden, but if you turn them on, you'll notice now that this gable roof has a uh, kind of a solid uh, primitive uh, object, and it also has what I call the roof outline, kind of this blue transparent layer. So what that does is it allows me to now use those two physical objects to do essentially Boolean subtraction with other roofs, which allows you to do roof connections. So now let's go ahead and throw in another smaller gable roof just to demonstrate this. And that's fine. I'm going to bring it back into this roof a little bit just so we have a little overlap. And go ahead and drop that in there. Okay, so you can see that both these roofs, and, and you know, you don't have, and I didn't turn off the soffit cut feature, but we probably should do that. <clears throat> um, let's go ahead and edit both these roofs, actually do that while we're at it, just so it cleans things up a little nicer. Um, so yeah, soffit cut, let's set that to zero, and let's change this to say 812 pitch, just so we have a little more architectural interest going on here. And then let's do that with this one as well. So go ahead and edit these rafter assemblies. Go ahead and change that. Let's say an 812. doesn't really matter. And where was our soffit cut down here? Right here. Okay. And drop that at zero. And notice that'll trim the tails of those rafters for us nicely. Whereas before they were projecting through the soffit. Okay. So now we've got two roofs. And <clears throat> now sometimes you know, you know how you... Well, typically something like this, you know, I probably just use the complex roof module and generate it and then change these to gable ends. But sometimes there are situations where maybe this particular secondary roof is kind of overframed over top of this other roof. And so that might be a situation where you would use this roof connection feature. So again, um, yeah, if you jump into the rafter, uh, edit rafter menu, you'll notice that there is no connection shown, right? 
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, to click the connection tool here. And it doesn't matter really which um, roof you select first. Select one of them, then select the other one, and then give it a second because it's going to regen those two roofs. And sometimes I have to wait just a while because there's a lot going on there. And then, um, yeah, now if you take a look underneath, you're going to notice it's essentially subtracted away those roofs. And let's go ahead and hide these outline layers and hidden layers. They should be hidden anyways, I guess. Um, right. And I think I'm going to actually just uh, hide this as well for now so we can have better visibility. Okay, so... Yeah, I mean, this is what happens by default, okay? So this is the default behavior when you intersect these two roofs or, or connect them, essentially. Um, <clears throat> now, this isn't particularly what we want, but let me show you now what we can do. So in this particular case, let's assume that this roof, uh, secondary roof, is framed over top of this other one, and so we don't want to trim away these rafters, right? And so in, originally, when I set up this connection tool with the complex roof um, only, um, there was no way to configure that. But now, if we go ahead and edit this now, you'll notice here between the basic options and the advanced options, if there is a roof connection, it will show it here, okay? And if you want to remove that roof connection, you know, you can actually connect more than one roof, right? So we've only connected one roof to this main roof. But what this is showing is saying, that, hey, this rafter assembly is connected to the roof in question. So it's actually showing the name of this secondary um, roof right here. The cool thing is um, we can now, if we select that, we can go ahead and configure it. Okay, so now what that's going to do is going to essentially configure the main roof here that we've, we've selected, and it's going to say, how does this secondary assembly trim the main roof? So I am actually going to remove rafters, framing and sheathing and leave everything else being trimmed by the secondary roof gutters insulation gypsum etc okay now of course right now i think uh, gypsum is not enabled for this roof type but that's fine it, and also you know it doesn't matter if some of these things aren't turned on um, you may have some of your advanced options turned off um, it, it will just ignore that so let's go ahead and update that connection now when it updates the connection it's updating the database it's not actually regening the roof okay so nothing's happened yet. Um, <clears throat> so you can hit update here, and it'll regen the roof, or you can close this out and just click, uh, right click on the uh, roof and regen it. Let's try that, I haven't actually tried that yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and regen this roof. Okay, and you can see now that it's put back all the rafters in the fascia board and the sheathing. So now it's just overframed this particular roof. And I'm going to go ahead and pull these two apart real quick, just so you can see what's happening here. So let's go ahead and pull that apart. Okay. So um, in this particular case, um, we've overframed that roof. Now you can have it so it cuts the sheathing. You can have it cut the fascia. Uh, and again, you can have it cut the rafters. It just depends how you want to do that. Now in the secondary roof, if we click here, you'll notice that here we also have a roof connection option. So each one is connected to the other, and so each one will show a connection. And now this is referencing this main uh, primary roof. And of course, if you go into the configuration menu here, you'll notice that all, everything is checked. So we're basically trimming everything. Now we could change that up if you want. I don't see a reason to, but that you know, it, it's very granular. You can change and configure things however you would like to do. So. Yeah, I think it gives people plenty of options um, and it gives you kind of the level of control that you need to make this actually a useful tool. Um, one other thing to note too is the information up here on this part of the menu is not configurable. This is currently it's just kind of information, status information, that sort of thing. Um, and actually the, if, if you have the roof connection, I mean, I don't know why it wouldn't be active, but I may have that uh, configurable later on. We'll see. So anyways, that's kind of the basics um, behind these um, roof connections, I guess. Um, there's not a whole lot more to talk about with that, I think. Um, the one thing to note, though, is, is if you do move these apart and you regen this roof now, um, you will see that um, <clears throat> the roof gets regened. 
And of course, it didn't change the primary roof, right? So what happens is, is you can regen each one of these independently of each other. Even though they're connected, you can regen this one or regen that one. And it's not going to change that connected roof. It's only if you regenerate or edit that roof. So, and then of course I can regen this one and you can notice everything goes away. So even though these two are not physically touching each other or connected, um, actually, you know, physically connected, um, they're still connected, right? So as soon as you move these two back within proximity of each other and were to regen these roofs, um, you'll notice that uh, it will go ahead and take care of all that subtraction again, right? So see, I've, I've subtracted away the parts of the roof, and then if I want to click Regen on that, um, you'll notice that sheathing is gone again. Of course, it's kind of just a partial connection. Um, but anyways, um, yeah, it's, it's pretty flexible that way. Okay, so let's go ahead. I'm going to remove these two, and I'm going to turn that grid back on. And I just want to show one last thing here before we end this uh, tutorial. And that is, um, I, I, I purposely created this t um, ability to connect roofs because of a lot of situations where you've got something like a complex roof and you've got something like this shed porch. And so I've already pre-created these and I've tested this out a little bit just to make sure it works. Um, you know, you gotta, gotta play with your geometry a little bit to make sure everything lines up. But um, I'm gonna go ahead and, and, and by the way, these two, I, I think, uh, if I remember right, hold on a second, let me check here. Uh, no, okay, so they're not connected. So we're going to go ahead and, and go ahead and connect these two, and we're not even going to put them together yet. We're just going to go ahead and connect them. So I'm going to go ahead and connect these two, and it does its little thing. It actually will regen both roofs, and with this complex roof being as big as it is, you're going to have to wait a second here to let it do its thing, and it finishes up regening, and it didn't actually do anything. Okay, so now I am going to jump here into this one and I am going to turn off rafters, framing, and sheathing. Okay, hit update connection. Okay, I'm just going to close this out. I don't need to regen it yet. I'm going to drag this now over here 40 feet and I think it was 40 feet that I had it. Yeah. I'm going to drop it right there. Okay. Now, you'll see that <clears throat> we've kind of got a situation here where we've got this U-shaped piece here, and we're going to essentially subtract away um, this, uh, this shed roof, right, from this other one. And so what I'm going to do now is I am going to regen uh, both roofs. Okay, so you notice here, you know, everything's overlapping. And I've also made sure that these eave um, portions are past the valleys here so that I get a clean kind of cut here. Um, so, you know, you kind of got to fiddle with this sometimes a little bit to get it right. But um, let's go ahead and regen this roof first. Actually, um, yeah, sure. Let's go ahead and regen it. Let's give it a second. It's going to do a bunch of Boolean subtractions. It takes a little while. Okay, so now you see we've got that, and that's kind of what we want. And I think I turned off, um, let me see here. I think the reason why that sheathing's not showing up, oh, it's because I changed it to ply earlier on. Let's go ahead and turn that on, and you can see that what we've got plywood there. Okay, and I'm going to change the visibility here in a second on that again. But anyways, um, so we've gone ahead, we've done that. Now, um, notice that we still got cladding there, so we're going to need to regen the primary roof, right? So let's go ahead and regen that roof. And it's going to trim away all of that um, soffit, fascia, gutter, etc. that doesn't need to be there, like all this back in here, right? So let's go ahead and regen complex roof. Give it a second. Now my computer is a little slow. Um, sadly, it's it's a bit dated, but it does what I need to do for now. So, okay, so I think we we're done. Yes, okay, so you can see now, let's turn off that grid again so we can see things better. So what's happened is, is we've set this up so that it's trimmed away on the primary roof, it's trimmed away the cladding, it's trimmed away the, um, 
soffit fascia and the gutters. It's left the fascia board, I think. Yeah. And then um, here, of course, on the other one is trimmed everything away. And um, and that's what we want. Now let's, let's hide a few layers just so I can show what we've got going on here. So you can get a rough idea. And I think this works pretty well. I mean, I don't think it's completely perfect yet in some instances because there are situations where the geometry just doesn't quite subtract away like one would expect or hope. Um, but overall, I think it gets you pretty close to what you need. So let's go ahead and turn off that. I'm going to change this sheathing now on this. Notice I changed this to uh, plywood. I'm going to change that again real quick and I can just show you what's going on. So that's essentially what we've got going on. And then if we change and hang, uh, hide the sheathing as well for the primary roof, you can see that we've got our shed rafters and they're projecting out over top of this uh, complex roof quite nicely and it's trimmed them out. Now they're trimming right, of course, not to the sheathing, but to the rafters themselves, because that is where the roof primitive is. So yeah, I mean, that's one thing that I don't have an adjustment for per se, if you want to get an offset there, but um, but I think it's pretty close at this point. So yeah, I think it's a pretty kind of cool tool that you have at your disposal now, where you can take shed roofs, uh, gable roofs, even truss roofs, you can connect them with other uh, roofs, complex roofs, uh, gables and rafters and everything. So you bas basically have the whole gamut here to work with. Um, anyways, if we have any other questions on that, uh, just let me know. Um, this is a very new feature. So, you know, I'm sure there are a few little uh, things that we can refine and make it even better. But um, yeah, I appreciate you guys' support and we'll talk to you guys later.